Well, I'm a little late to the game, but every one of these Macs in front of us can run Sequoia, and OCLP 2.0.2 is out. Today's video, we're going to be showing you how you can install Sequoia on an unsupported Mac. Not this one, not this one, not this one, definitely not this one, but this one, my mid-2010 MacBook. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun time, so let's get to it. Anyway, I'm Greg Rutkin of Rutkin Mods, and this isn't going to work, is it? I'll be right back. So yeah, guys, I'm a little late to the game here, and uh, I actually planned on filming this video about two and a half weeks ago, back when the release candidate was still out, and OCLP 2 nightly was out, and that didn't happen. Uh, a lot of things came in the way. But today we will be installing Sequoia onto this MacBook here. And there's a few caveats and issues that we'll run across that we will address. And I'm going to show you a few different ways you can get Sequoia onto this system. And uh, yes, I actually ended up waiting until I was sure it would work on every system because this system, it didn't work on the first few versions. 2.0.2 actually fixed this and as you can see it runs. So we'll be putting it on this and showing you the thing step by step on how to do it. So let's get to it. Okay, so first things first. If you're going to do this, you'll need to first go to the website uh, for uh, Dortania and go to release apps here and download the latest version. Right now it's 2.0.2 and you just go down to right here, the Open Core Patcher GUI app, download that. Or if you already have Open Core, make sure you're on the latest version, which I don't think this one currently is. Let's see. I'm still on Nightly, and now it's asking me to update. We will download the update, let that process, and then we'll come back. Okay, once you have it updated, you will want to install it to your boot drive just so you have it on here. And if you haven't installed OpenCore before, like if you're on a supported system OS here, uh, you will have to install it first and boot into OpenCore first for the next step to work properly, unless you're doing it through the USB installer way. But the way we're going to do it on in this video is going to be a little different. So keep that in mind. Now, if you're planning on just updating OpenCore, yes, install the root patches, but since we're going to be installing a whole new OS here, um, the patches aren't going to really matter, and uh, they will install afterwards. So, the next step here is to go to Create Mac OS Installer. Now, if you're doing the USB version, uh, I would recommend a 32 gigabyte flash drive. 16 gigs don't work on the newest OSs anymore. That's just slightly too small. Uh, I'm using this one terabyte hard drive because it's the only drive I have right now. But uh, any USB uh, drive should work. But anyway, as long as it's 32 gigs, what you need to do is go to download Mac OS installer. and then download macOS Sequoia. And now here's the problem. Some of the earlier systems, uh, this is one of them, uh, the USB 1.1 drivers do not exist in Sequoia and you have to install it later. That means your keyboard won't work and your mouse won't work until after you install Sequoia and get it patched out. And the way to get around that is to use a USB hub or a aluminum Apple keyboard that has a USB hub built into it. That's USB 2.0. So uh, that's the way to get around it. Uh, but this gives you that warning just in case you don't know about it. So we'll download anyways, and it will download. And once it's finished downloading, we'll come back. Okay, it has downloaded and now it's validating. We'll just wait for that to finish up. And now it's extracting the installer. 
Okay, now that it's downloaded, we have two different options we can do. Now, if you're on an OCLP-supported OS like Big Sur and later, uh, you can follow what we're going to be doing here. If you're on something earlier like Catalina and back, uh, and OpenCore can open up in your OS and you've booted into OpenCore, um, it might work, but sometimes it doesn't. So keep that in mind with the step we're going to do. But if it doesn't, you'll have to follow the uh, link up here to my Sonoma installer video. Uh, I'll have a timestamp and everything on that and just follow how to install over that. The thing is, instead of wiping your drive, if you're inst installing it cleanly, you can wipe your drive and follow those instructions. But if you're just installing over your OS, you just click install over um, and just install over your current drive and it will just update it. But we're going to actually not make the installer, so we will not need the actual uh, external drive to do this. So what we are going to do is close out all of this. Now, if you do it this way, and um, if you do it this way, you want to make sure you're booted into OpenCore, okay? Uh, open up your installer here, and it will allow you to just do it. Hit continue. Choose your disk. Hit continue. And it will just install. And you let that install and it will boot into Sequoia. Now, if you're doing it this way, it will probably not be patched. And if you're running one of the systems that doesn't have the uh, that's 1.1 uh, uh, USB system, you will still need a USB hub to install the patches. If you're doing it the other way, uh, where you boot into the USB installer, um, it should, in theory, automatically patch everything, especially if you made it on this the system you're installing it on. Uh, but it's a 50-50. You might still need the USB hub, and you'll definitely need the USB hub when you're in the installer. So either way, you're going to need a USB hub. But this way, it doesn't install the drivers automatically. And the other way, after you get past the installing part of it, after you boot into it and all that stuff, you don't need the drivers. But either way, you will be needing USB uh, 2 hub to install Sequoia for those systems. Now, later systems, of course, you won't need it. And everything should just work. But uh, just keep that in mind. So we'll let this install. And uh, the next time you see it, it should be in Sequoia. Okay, while it's installing, the patcher will detect that it needs to update. Just hit OK. It will download the uh, required KDK files to uh, allow this to smoothly install. Quite neat. You can also do the over-the-air update, but um, sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, I forgot to mention that earlier. Uh, you can go over to the over-the-air update Go to General, Software Update, and try the OTA way, but uh, it doesn't mean it will work. This is the easiest and fastest way to do it, honestly. Uh, the OTA version doesn't always work. And as you can see, we actually do have the option to do it. This may work. This may not work. It doesn't always work. That's why I like doing it the way we're doing it right now because um, that will guarantee it will work. But uh, now it detects that everything, there's an update and stuff, and it will ask you if you want to do it. Anyway, it has finished downloading the KDK files and installing them, and it's continuing an update. And we will almost be done finishing the install of Sequoia the next time you see the video. It should be in the uh, black screen Apple logo uh, section by then. All right, I lied a little bit. If you're at this section and you're doing it this way, it might stick at 28 minutes for a while. The OTA version, I think, sticks at around 25 minutes. Just let it run. It will eventually finish up. It might take a lot longer than 28 minutes, though, just to let you know.
By the way, if you've made it this far into the video and you can't figure out why your system won't install, you're probably running a T2 MacBook Air, aka the 2018 or 2019 MacBook Air. I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video, they aren't supported right now, thanks to the T2 chip. Uh, they are having a lot of problems with them. Hopefully sometime soon it will work, but right now it doesn't. So uh, keep the hope, keep the faith. Those systems will hopefully one day run Sequoia also, but right now it doesn't work. Anyway, let's get back to install. Well, that took over an hour of sitting on 28 minutes. Now it restarts. So we're in the first step of installing it and converting everything. We'll come back when it's in the second step. Okay, the system has restarted. It should be going to the second part now. It's trying to boot off of that. Make sure it doesn't. Make sure it boots off the installer. So we'll hit that. And now it's starting to install Sequoia. The system will continue to restart a few times and then it should boot right into Sequoia and we'll see you in Sequoia. And we've got about nine minutes remaining, which, uh, yeah, who knows how long it's going to take, but it will be done soon. Okay, it's now October. It took uh, about three times as long as it said it was going to to finish up from the last part of the video. Uh, yeah, it was more than nine minutes. But anyway, we are in Sequoia, and it, it, yeah, I forgot. We need an aluminum keyboard or any other USB 2 hub to uh, continue here because, uh, yeah, it doesn't do anything. So let me plug this in here. And, woo, yeah, the drivers definitely are installed. Where'd the mouse go? Here, mousey, mousey, mousey. So yeah, that's the drawback of doing it this way. The setup's kind of painfully slow. Cool, it just dumped itself right back into the desktop. Here we are in the desktop. Um, now here's the thing, to patch this, you may have to plug it into Ethernet. This might not need to be, we're going to find out. It already detected that it needs patch, so we don't have to pull up open core, but if it didn't detect it, you would have to. Hit OK. Now it's supposed to download the KDK. This is why you need to plug it into Ethernet, because even though it downloaded the KDK before it installed, um, yeah, we might have to plug it into Ethernet. Uh, I don't think the Wi-Fi works. So, let's see. Wi-Fi is on. It's not connected, though. <laughs> On some systems, you will definitely have to have it plugged into Ethernet if uh, the drivers are not installed. Um, this one, I don't know. We're going to see. Just let it sit and see what happens. Okay, so it's definitely not connecting to the Internet to download this KDK. So we will have to plug it into Ethernet. So let me grab that. That didn't sound good. So I'm going to plug this in. We'll be right back. So it doesn't seem to be wanting to download anything. Let's close that. We will close out of the patcher and reopen it. Maybe. It's not closing. I don't know why I opened that. Okay, we have the patcher closed. Close that. 
Open the patcher back up. Post install root patch. Start root patch. Now it should download. Oh. Did I plug the right wire in? Yes, I did. Should be working. All right, I'm going to verify I have internet on here. I'll be right back. We do have internet and the KDK is still not fetching. So, we may have to restart the system. Okay, we forced reboot it again, and I apologize for how dirty this screen is. I didn't realize it was dirty. Yeah, um, it's very obvious now. Uh, that's not apparent when you're, um, you know, have a wallpaper and stuff on the screen. It's just, uh, I guess, a Sequoia install kind of thing for me because it's the same thing that happened uh, in the last Sequoia video we did. Let's try that again. Open core. Post install. Start root patching. Where'd it go? So needless to say, I haven't had any problems with this version of Open Core yet. <laughs> uh, every time I film something, why did it disappear? There it goes. Hey, it worked that time. And all, it redetected that it needed the, but we're patching right now. So it will patch. It actually did not need to have the, uh, Ethernet plugged in. It was just a glitch. It needed restarted apparently. So if you are doing it the way that we uh, did it, uh, starting in where in my case was Ventura and installing from Ventura on uh, with the installer itself, the KDK it downloaded should be there and it should work. And if it's frozen on that screen, restart the system. See if it fixes at that time. Um, yeah. Now, if you're doing this with the USB installer, you might need Ethernet if it did not install the drivers, because it will have to download the KDK. And it failed the patch. Now, this is not a usual problem, and it should have worked. Hmm. So I'm going to play around with this, see if I can fix it. So I just re-ran it again, the root patcher, and it looks like it's going to work this time. So fingers crossed. Hey, it worked that time. So we reboot, restart. It's still trying to download the KDK it doesn't need. You can close that now. Anyway, at this point, once it restarts, please restart. There it goes. It's restarting. Once it restarts, we can unplug the USB hub slash keyboard, and everything should work. I'm just going to move that to the side and let it boot back up. So forewarning here, I do always recommend Ventura or further back with uh, the Core 2 systems, the Core 2 base systems that are non-metal, because they are kind of slow, even with an SSD and a uh, really good amount of RAM. Now, once this is booted up, it should be pretty snappy, but uh, the animations and stuff, it's, of course, slow it down a bit. And we are almost booted up here. It is definitely patched, and it is still loading. This has an SSD and I think 12 gigabytes worth of RAM in it. I had 16 in it. I don't remember what happened the other bit of RAM in it. But yeah, here it goes. There's the animation. And now it should fully load. Please fully load. This is another glitch I've found with Sequoia. Sometimes the bar doesn't load, and um, 
yeah, I'm hoping they fix that soon. If it doesn't load, you'll have to restart the system again. And uh, it looks like I'm going to, but hey, the, uh, the regular mouse works now and it's not laggy and it's, it's, it's got acceleration now. So I'm going to restart it again. And the next time it loads up, it should work. The menu didn't start again. <laughs> That's annoying. There might be another way to get it to work. Hey, the menu popped up. There we go. So sometimes the menu will need a little help, I guess. Uh, it does work now, as we can see here. Uh, I don't know. If you're having problems with that, try to open a different application, see if it pops up. If it doesn't, go to Settings in Open Core Legacy Patcher and let it freeze again. There it goes. Go to, uh, I think it's Root Patching, yeah. And uh, try to do something like disable beta menu bar if you have that enabled. I think that's why it's not popping up. So if we do that, and then we log off, and then we log off, and then we log off, there we go, log out, log out, log out, oh, CLP is still open. Force quit. Not responding. Force quit. There we go. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Just log out. Now when it logs back in, it should have the regular non-beta bar, which should in theory work. It will look a little different, but it will work. If it ever logs back in, there we go. The menu e immediately popped up. So that's how you fix that. If you have the beta bar enabled and it won't pop up, that's why. And there we go. It all works now. Everything works. We have it booted. If we go to about this Mac. It eventually loads it. Please load it. Any day now. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little a little slow, but once it's fully loaded up, Sequoia works fairly decently. I I, I mean, look, all the acceleration works. Now there's some problems with Sequoia. First off, the iPhone mirroring app will not work. It only works on supported Macs minus the 2019 iMac. You have to have at least a T2 chip for iPhone mirroring to work. So any open core legacy patcher system uh, currently will not support iPhone mirroring. Now the MacBook Airs, when those, uh, if the support happens on those for the T2 ones, uh, iPhone mirroring in theory should work. But otherwise, if you have an open core legacy patch or system running Sequoia, you will not be able to use the iPhone mirroring. But other than that, everything seems to work fine. There are a few glitches on the non-metal systems. Some apps just don't work, like uh, I, I hear the Photos app doesn't work. A few other things. You'll need different programs to manage your photos. So yeah, like the, uh, the non-metal systems, just aren't designed to work with some of the apps that uh, are required to work on stuff like Sequoia all the way back to Big Sur. Uh, yeah, I, you just can't get some apps to work because they require metal and non-metal systems can't run it. But if you have a metal system or a system that's been upgraded to a metal card, it will work with all the apps in theory other than, of course, the iPhone mirroring. So yeah, and that's how you install, install Sequoia onto a uh, white MacBook or any other 
unsupported Mac. And now that everything's loaded, it's it's pretty snappy. It's it's very useful. Everything just works. As you can see there, it actually loads quicker now. Uh, everything just loads up. Like so. Like so. Okay, it's a little slow, but considering this has an SSD in it and a lot of RAM, it runs a lot faster than it would if it had a hard drive. I would recommend if you're running OCLP anything, that you have at least an SSD and try to max your RAM out. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting eons for something like my iMac to boot. Um, but other than that, that's all you need to know. It works perfectly uh, for the most part. So, yeah, we got Sequoia running on a 2010 MacBook. Anyway, guys, let's wrap up the video. So, yeah, guys, sorry that it took so long to get uh, this video out. I wanted to do this a lot earlier, as I told you earlier in the video, and it just didn't happen. But we now have two systems right here running Sequoia, and uh, even my uh, late 2009 iMac which I upgraded to the 880M uh, GTX, uh, is running Sequoia now, and it's got full metal acceleration, which is awesome. So I've currently got three systems running Sequoia, and uh, other than the fact this one's really slow with the hard drive, it takes eons to boot, and it's just sluggish. This one's not too bad once it's, once it's booted. Um, they work. They work quite well. Uh, just a little slow on this one. And uh, if I had an SSD in this one, it would work a lot better. And uh, I will probably eventually be putting it on this. Right now I'm still running Ventura on this. But I guarantee it will work fine because it works fine on my late 2009. And it's more or less the same hardware other than the fact this is Sandy Bridge. And that was a, a, a first generation i7 in it. And uh, other than that, it's the same basic GPU, just a little slower than this one, but still metal compatible. So I will eventually upgrade that one too. Sequoia works great. And uh, I hope this video was pretty easy to follow. Uh, it went a little off the hinges as usual, but it worked. And uh, we were successful in making it work. And uh, it just took an extra hour longer than I figured it would because it's, it's, it's slow on a Core 2 system to install. But once it's installed, it works quite well. So that's awesome. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it was informative. And uh, yeah, uh, that's the end of today's video. Don't forget, I do have a Patreon and memberships if you want to help me out. Uh, you know the draw all that. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. If I've helped you out, you know, give me a thumbs up, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the end of today's video. This has been a Rocky Mods video.